Hi there, so welcome to Something Saturday. Um, as you probably know, I have been at the um, Picture to Page show last weekend and I happened to see this amazing little card that I thought was really cool. So, uh, so I have to admit I did buy a pack because I kind of felt a bit guilty just copying the design and not buying it, so I bought one. Um, and, uh, and now I've copied the design and made it um, more A4 friendly. <laughs> So, um, in fact, my one is A5 friendly. So there you go. Uh, I'm just going to flip the screen and actually show you the cards and then I'll show you how to make them. So, so here we go. Hopefully you can... Ooh, it's a bit dark, isn't it? Sorry. Hopefully you can see it all right. I do have the lights on as well. Um, okay. So let me, let me show it to you flat first of all. Hang on. Let me stand up move those two out of the way um, so so the idea is that it will uh, now how does it fold folds away like that okay in fact you know what I'm just gonna pop this onto my little stand so that I've got two hands free to do this uh, there we go sorry if it's a bit See whether that's about right. Okay, so potentially you're going to send it like that. However, when it opens up, so this is the cards, um, the card stock that I bought from her. Not, not the decorative card stock. I I decorated it. It just comes as a card blank, um, and then they sit together and those two flap down. So you end up with it looking like that, and then you put a little. Um, easel card into the center of it so that's the first one that I made up then I've got this one so again just like that so I've made this up specifically for a friend of mine who helped me out an awful lot recently so um, that just goes around like that those two bits go down and that bit flaps up so I know that this particular friend loves purple and so um, I'm hoping that she will like that and then this is my A5 friendly job so the A5 friendly job actually fits into an envelope as it is without having to be squashed up into um, four pieces so potentially this then opens up does that and that little guy sits there so I'm going to show you how to make this one Alrighty, so let me take a seat. And oh, I've gone and put that lot on top of everything. All right, let me just pop those out of the way, put that into the corner. So, enter my A5 sheet of cardstock. So, I'm using the thick cardstock that Stamping Up have because I like the, um, the thickness of it and it works for me. Um, oh, apparently, I have a piece of sellotape hanging around there let's get rid of that so what you want to do is you want to start off with the square so I am going to take that to there and so I know that if I cut a sheet of A4 in half it's 14.8 centimeters so therefore I want to have 14.8 centimeters going this way and it will be a square then you need to score this in half. So I also happen to know, because I've been doing this for a while, that half of 14.8 is 7.4. <laughs> so um, not really that difficult to calculate, but um, it's just one of those things that after a while you just remember that. So 17.4 like that. So you're going to score it in half that way. Then you turn it and again you score it in half this way. This time out, you also want to cut one half of it. So with our cutter, you can actually see that you've got little, um, like a little divot thing there, and that actually shows you where it, the cut line goes to. So I know that I've now cut up to this line here because that's where my divot um, matches. So that's what I now have ended up with, which is fabulous because that's what I want. Then I want to create a score line going that way and that way. So I am just going to lay this back onto here. Take that line to there and that line to there. And oh, 
Now if my finger's out of the way and hope that it didn't move. Nope, we're good, excellent. And again, that to that. And that didn't work at all. Oh, didn't work because this decided to pop out. So let's just push that back in and let's try again. So there to there, much better. Okay, excellent. So the cool thing with this cutter is that you do have the entire length of the scoreboard to cut with and to score with. So it is a really great cutter, this. Um, so now these bits will flap down. This piece will come forwards and these bits will also come forwards and that will form the base of your card. Right, let me move this out of the way. And I'm going to tell you that I have, so I have this little plan here, okay. So I've got my 14.8 inch squ uh, centimetre square, so there it is. Then I need to cut my easel piece, but I'll do that in a second, and my designer series paper. So I've got my designer series paper because designer series paper comes in inches. So it's actually a lot easier to cut it in inches than in centimetres, if you get my drift. So I've got my designer series paper at two point uh, two and three quarters of an inch square. So, ta -da, and here's some I cut earlier, just like Blue Peter. And I'm going to, I know that those two pieces go together and I know that those two pieces go together. So if you have paper that, for example, like this one, has writing on it, so you know that the writing needs to go not upside down, basically. You need to make sure that when you cut it, you are going to cut it so the writing does not go upside down. So I can see that I've got Paris there and I want Paris to be that way rather than that way. And the same thing with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those on there. So good old Tombow. And I'm just going to find myself a bit of scrap paper just to pop underneath there. Oh, that was really thick. No, don't want scrap paper. I want my, ah, um, uh, whatever this is called. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> um, silicone mat, there you go. I knew I'd get there eventually. Uh, let's just add my glue onto there. Because the thing with the silicone mat is if you end up with glue on it, it, the glue will just dry and then it rubs off, which is so much easier. Otherwise, if you end up with glue on your on your surface underneath, then your card gets cut stuck to it, and then you end up in a world of sticky stuff, which is not good. So there we go. Oh, there goes the phone. Hopefully, someone who's inside gets that. Although I completely forgot to tell them I was doing a video. So there we go. So that's those two pieces on and just do this. Oops, see now I've got a bit of um, bit of glue on the mat there, but that doesn't matter. And let's just persuade those into that spot and oh gee, I'm i I'm getting sticky even so. Wow. Thought I was being so careful. Never mind. And then we persuade that piece into there. So you kind of do want the glue to come to the ends of your cardstock because otherwise you're going to find that you get little pieces that sort of flap up on the corners and it doesn't look quite so nice when it does that. So these pieces here, let's just make sure they're going to be the right way around. Yep, looks good. Uh, let's go like that. And I've managed to turn it round. So we'll just sit that. Into there. Obviously, we've got a bit of Europe here because I can see Marseille and Florence and Paris and 
I have no idea what that says. It looks like Zealand. Zealand. Okay. Well, that's... Hmm. All right. I think it might be part of Germany. Because the rest of the names on it look kind of Germanish. Oh, Florence. Let's get Florence the right way round. There we go. So that has made up the base of your card to begin with. Okay. Now we're going to go... Oh, I wonder what that was. Oh, I know what that was from. Duh. Okay, so that, that was a piece that I cut off, which is really convenient because I actually need a piece um, to create my little saying with. So I really love that you make the world a better place and I don't know what I've done with the stamp set. I have probably gone and put it away. Okay. You know what? I actually had it here. That's typical. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Um, where is it? Oh, I did put it away. There it is. So, beautiful world. So, the oh, probably should tell you this, but the designer series paper that I'm using is um, I might just grab it out of here and show you. So, it's the one that goes with this beautiful world suite. It's so gorgeous. It's got this lovely foil. Um, highlighty bits on it so you'll see that we've got some worlds and I've actually hand cut a couple of the worlds out to use on the card and then there's the base that I used on this one um, they are quite nice on the other side as well by the way sorry I haven't really been showing you the other side um, probably because I'm so addicted to the um, the foil side. This one is actually called World of Good Specialty Designer Series Paper. So there you go. We actually have a name for it now. Um, so there's a couple of sheets that don't have any gold on any of the foiling on it. I don't think it's gold foiling. I've got a feeling it's the uh, not bronze. Oh, it might be bronze. Yeah. So anyway, so we've got all of those. Oh, this one's kind of cool. Look at that. Whoa. And then the other side. And the other one is this one here, which has the Dominion of Canada. There we go. So I'm just going to move that lot out of the way and pop it down here into its pocket. Along with that. Great. All right. So, so I wanted to pop a nice saying on it so I've gone with you make the world a better place because I think that's a lovely saying so now let's grab my clear block pop that to one side we will go with a bit of stays on because stays on makes it nice and black and I that's what I'm after so you don't have to stamp it level or anything because we're going to be cutting down with a circle cutter. And let's just pop that to one side for now because I'm not sure what I did with my cleaner. <laughs> Everything is here. It's just not necessarily where I think it's going to be. I've been having one of those sort of mornings, really. Now, one of these... I think it might be that one there. Nope. Nope, next size down. That one there, that's the one I'm after. So these are my circle framelits. So the circle framelits are kind of cool because they also have this, um, um, the scallop edge as well. So you can actually create a frame with, with the um, scallop for your actual circle. So anyway, just going to pop that away. I'm going to take this quickly over to my stamping cup and emboss machine and pop it through. Oh, you know what I should do? I should use my new one. I have this really cute little stamping cup and emboss machine. How gorgeous is this? Sorry, got to show it off. So there it is. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And it comes with these cute little plates as well. So I'm going to put my plate on there and that 
and that because I know this will fit in here. So cute. <laughs> oh, and it's moved. Right, jolly good. Hang on a minute. Let's just centre that a little bit better. And there it is, cut out for me. It is so gorgeous, this little machine, and then it clips the sides all clip back up together again, and it just takes up like a little tiny bit of space for you, and then a little tiny bit of space for those. <laughs> Obviously, I'm a little bit enamored with it. <laughs> okay, anyway, moving away from that, so let's just pop my circle die back into there because I don't want to lose it. That would not be good to lose one of the circles. Now, the other thing that I have done with this one is I've actually added a bit of the gold, um, gold gilded leafing around the outside of it because I just thought it needed something to make it pop. So I'm going to show you how I did that. And I have my glue sponge and I have my silicone mat just in case because you know I don't want to get glue everywhere so you put your glue onto the silicone mat and then you grab your glue sponge so the glue sponge is nothing special it just happens to be a sponge that I call a glue sponge because I use it purely for glue and you just want to just go round the edge of your circle with your glue sponge, just so that you end up with a sort of gluey edge to your circle, basically. Let's just move my glue sponge and everything out of the way now and enter my gilded leafing box. As I said in one of the previous videos that I did, it's kind of like, whoa! when you get into the gilded leafing. So then I'm just gonna roll this around in my gilded leafing and look at that. <laughs> Potentially, I'm also going to take it off. <laughs> so you then just work around and that's the reason that I have a sponge in here is because the gilded leafing just needs something to um, persuade it off so that you just end up with the amount that you actually want rather than all the rest of it as well. So there we go, that's looking good. Oh, it's looking like it's all over me too. There we go. Oh, I like that. Okay, make sure that I'm gilded leafing off and pop the lid on there. Don't sneeze when you've got it open because um, you will have gilded leafing just go poof and it goes everywhere. <laughs> I haven't thankfully experienced that and I'm kind of hoping that I don't. <laughs> All right, so the last part is you actually need something to make this stand up and hook in behind this. So this is what's called an easel where you actually have something like that and then it hooks in behind the thing that you've got there. So I've actually used a piece of um, clear window sheeting for my easel just because I wanted to, I didn't want to cover up that gorgeous designer series paper that's underneath there. Whereas on the other cards, I'll just show you. So on these cards, I've actually used a little piece so this one I've used a little bit of the um, purple with it so that um, yeah you can just see that underneath there and on this one here I've just used a little bit of the um, um, that blue so that's the um, coastal cabana that's underneath that one but with this one I just thought you know I, I just love gold so Anyway, so my little piece, my easel piece, as I've called it on here, is two centimetres wide, ten and a half centimetres long, and then I've scored it at two centimetres and six centimetres. So you've got two centimetres wide, ten and a half long, score it at two centimetres 
and six centimeters. Okay, and then obviously you fold your score marks. Now what happens is this needs to attach down onto the bottom of your saying. So we are just gonna pop a little bit of a Tombow onto here. And find the bottom of my saying. So you do need to make sure that it's the right way up. So basically it needs to go that way. Have I got that right? No, I have not got that right. Okay, don't listen to me. It goes the other way up. <laughs> I'm only trying to teach you it, you know, so that so that you'll remember. You know, if I if I do it wrong, then hopefully everyone will go, oh, that's right, she did it wrong, so I better do it right. So it actually goes that way up. So potentially you would have the rest of it straight like that if it wasn't already um, folded. So I'm just gonna hold that there for a second because I know that um, the window sheeting takes a little bit longer for the glue to dry into it. And then it's gonna get stuck down onto this. Whoa, how cool is this? Right, so again, I'm going to now put the glue, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here, just onto this flat strap, strip, strippy strappy bit of window sheeting. And then I'm going to attach that down so that the circle sort of ends up almost in the middle. So you do want it to be on that angle because when it comes through, you're going to obviously have it on the angle like that. That one keeps popping up. Do you make the world a better place? Do you feel special now? <laughs> and the last thing we need to do with this is just add my little globe that I um, cut out just with a dimensional. So, there we go. Grab that out. Oh, persuade that off. And so if you have placed an order with me in um, February or your uh, not February, what are we in March? Sorry. Um, or you're planning to place an order with me getting quick, um, then if you have placed an order of $60 or more, you'll get a free one of those. If your order makes it over $900 instead of one of the uh, not 990. Oh, goodness, where am I going with it? Wow, $900 order. That would be amazing. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I'd be wondering why you're not a demonstrator if you had a $900 order to go through. However, <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm a bit of a wally sometimes. If you have a $90 order that goes through, um, then I will be sending you a pack of something that I've actually just used up, which is the Holiday Rhinestones, and they're absolutely gorgeous. So, um, so yes, if your order is $60 up to $90, you'll get one of these. Um, it's a pack of three of them. And if your order is over $90, you'll get a pack of the um, Holiday Rhinestones, which are also rather gorgeous. Um, so that is how the card turns out anyway. So it's rather beautiful, isn't it? I'm really happy with the way these turn out. So now I need to find someone really special to give them to. And that is, that's that pretty much. Um, so don't forget, share the video. So share the love. Uh, you can, if you happen to have um, Velcro, you can put a little bit of Velcro in there if you want to. But I actually do find that it sits okay as it is. So, and potentially if you... If you're thinking that it's not sitting okay as it is, make sure that it's really well scored down with your bone scorer. Because it really should be able to just sit like that. She says, it's very difficult for me to display it to you knowing that you're up there and it's down here. And, you know, looking like, it, like that is probably not that exciting. So there we go. So, yes, share the love. And if you do want to place an order, don't forget, hop onto my website and you can do that at any time. Um, or you can get me to do it for you if you need me to. Um, 
and I will see you next Saturday. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.